Well, what's the crack? How are you getting on? You're all very welcome to episode 117 of Buckshot with your host, of course. Mr. Tom O'Mahony, how are you? As you can guess, 117 of them in. There's, uh, we've been here for quite a while and we're up to 55 Ramble Pods as well. So if it's your first time listening, hit subscribe. Go ahead. Give it a fucking lash, the old subscribe button, because we're out twice weekly with this. Carry on. So today is the 21st of June 2000 and... <laughs> I can't even remember what year it is. It's 2000 and... 2019, good cripes. But it's actually going out as I'm doing this, uh, doing the intro here. I'm doing it the night of the 20th. So this will go straight up onto Patreon. So the Patreons will have it in their ear holes before everybody else because that's only fair. If you're a Patreon, it's only fair. You're getting the good stuff a little early. If you have been considering contributing to the podcast, it's the easiest way to do it. Do it one time only or whatever. You know what I mean? If this is, as they say, if you'd like to buy a man a pint or even a coffee. Jesus, is a pint. You wouldn't get a pint for three quid. It all helps. But you do get stuff early. I have a couple of videos I want to throw up there too. Just silly kind of funny videos from, from that people send me on and whatnot that I'll make them just exclusive to the old Patreons. And there is, of course, the Tom and Jerry show. Back catalogue of that. There's 18 episodes. And I think I have a couple of more hidden somewhere. I must throw them up there. For the crack. Uh, gigs. Let me just open up the old calendar here for you. Um, UCH still hasn't gone up on sale. But... Um, Stand up wise, there's a couple of new gigs. They'll be going up on the site. I'm doing Belfast. I'll be back in Lavery's, hosting Lavery's next month, hopefully. And the end of next month, I'll be down back down in Cork. Like I said, the old gigs are getting few and far between because I haven't time with the rehearsal that's going to be going on for Defending the Caveman. Uh, next Dublin date is actually on show. I'll be an on show headlining on the 3rd of July. And I think I'm doing a couple of hosty things in between then, but sure, don't worry about them, lads. Don't worry about them at all. Um, Defender the Caveman is on sale everywhere barring UCH at the minute but I'll put the link in the description anyway so give it an old gander oh I found out a bunch of the Tea Republic stuff some went to other places but I know that one went to a uh, long term listener fan of the show Brian over there in Perth he said it's gone a bit cowed so he had to get a, a few bits and bobs for himself with the old Tea Republic uh, shop all the merch basically with logos and all the rest of it he promises to model it and I'll put it up on Dowl Instagram and the old Chatty Snaps, which is Tom O'Mahony comedy for all except Chatty Snaps, which is Tom Bear O'Mahony, if you want to give it an old follow. An old follow. Lord. Very exciting times. The dog is losing her fucking life. They're after cutting the field next door, lads. And I'm not kidding you. There's deer everywhere. And pheasants. The dog is losing her fucking bananas. I, on the other hand, am just looking longingly at these gorgeous, tasty looking bastards that are completely out of season. Sticking their fucking proverbial fucking fingers slash hoofs up at me anyway that's all that that's you i've given you all the news you need to know now you know where to find me you know where to follow me you know where to support the show you know where to buy stuff sure jesus lads i can do no more for you other than do the show like i said i have next week's already recorded so i'm gonna try and see can i squeeze in another one somewhere to see can i keep at least a week or two ahead of myself but moving on to today's guest uh, i first worked with this man back three years ago in uh, uch in the panto where he played Gaston and he's a gas crack bastard himself. He's this man has this man has partied. This man has lived. He's a <laughs> he's been in all our lives in Ireland at some point or another back in the mid mid two thousands. He played Mondo. He still does play Mondo in Fair City. Um a dozen or so weeks of the year he he's 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 on Fair City, but he also runs his own with, along with his partner, soon to be wife, Rachel, they run their own uh, stage school all over the place, making a fortune to Horace. Uh, we had a great time. I was telling you about it on, during the Ramble Pod that essentially he thought he was going to be called to go to the gym with his <laughs> soon to be wife, but it wasn't that. She expected him to follow her to the gym. So our podcast ran well over an hour, which is fantastic for me. But I do believe he probably got a bit of an ear roasting for uh, missing the 20 missed calls or so that he had out on the phone afterwards. But hey, I got a good podcast out of it and you'll get a good podcast out of it. So sit back and enjoy the brilliant George McMahon. Finds it throughout the whole oh, thing. Really, yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. You all you do is just, you just highlight that and go. See that ticket? Find that everywhere and pull it out. 
Oh my god! Yeah. So we do that on Fair City all the time, um, where they you know a siren goes yeah. by because we they built the the set on Fair City right next to a hospital. Yeah, which is and the N eleven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like so, one of the busiest two so, characters. So the every time we we film a scene that's uh, outdoors, you know, we yeah. say okay, everybody silence. We're going to take a wild track, um, but I always thought that was to put it on. Top no, of, no, no, so they're finding it. No, they might, they, they might because it might be in place. It'd be perfect for spots. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. where there's silence between two people, and they want that playing, so they go, "We pick up a wild track while we're here." Yeah, and yeah. nothing sounds as good as the real thing. Like, yeah, yeah. nothing does. So you know, oh, because yeah, you get those kind of stock sounds that you can buy, yeah. it's just like canned laughter. <laughs> well, and, they yeah, did, just yeah. Awful. yeah. Hey, we're we're off to the races, Georgie Mac. Hey, delighted to have you on Buckshot. Yeah, it's a long time coming, isn't it? Yeah, well, what's it? Three years now, is it? Yeah, yeah, three yeah. Years and. I just every so often I'd see a new name popping up and I was like, oh, okay, that's good. It hurts a little. That hurts a little <laughs> bit. I was like, you know, I thought we were, I thought we were tight. I thought we were cool. Um, but eventually, then you DM'd me. Yeah, that's very modern of you. <laughs> and I was like, this is great. I'm excited to do it. It's yeah, my first it, one of these, by the way. First, you, you've never, I've never. The amount of cherries I get so excited about popping from yeah, fucking podcasts. Yeah. Like, yeah, well, just be gentle with me. Don't you worry. Uh, listen, we've been we've been holding hands for the last half an hour here, anyway. So it's yeah, all right. Yeah. yeah. The, do you know what though? Because I'm surprised you haven't been asked to be on more. But I didn't. You see, you're t- you're nearly too good crack for a lot of podcasts. A lot of podcasts go for misery stories. That seems to be their thing. I know. It's just like what? Where's oh, the? Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tell us. Well, when I, did it really hurt, George? <laughs> and you're like, for the love of fuck, would you relax? Well, I do come from a broken home. <laughs> you had a great... <laughs> you, you cracked me up. Well, we worked together on year one of my first time at Panto. Sure, I didn't know what was going on. I was just following you around the place to see what was supposed to happen. When do we walk on now, George? No, Tom, stand there. You're IR. <laughs> well, you were telling me a great one about your outlet. <laughs> the white bread. You had a great... That she was trying to kill him or something with white bread. Oh was yeah, it, who was who was trying to kill him? Was was his, he's after getting a new missus? Was he, it? I got a new missus. Yeah, um, but he uh, his uh, his wife now um, is all healthy, and they go picking seaweed together in in Waterford. And, what? Yeah, and he's after losing about two stone. Um, but he has this thing about like bread. He absolutely loves bread, but it, he's obviously well, he's Irish, Irish. <laughs> but he's obviously like uh, gluten intolerant or w- whatever the new thing is. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it would never ever. Say Say that he's gluten intolerant, but like his his belly goes rock hard and he nearly dies uh, when he has bread. <laughs> um, so like there was a conspiracy going on in the house. It's like I think people are trying to kill him. <laughs> anyway, we're very happy with him now, so we're we're safe and secure in the knowledge now that he's eating less bread, more seaweed, and he's having a great time. To be on that point, I think that bread has changed. They're doing something to the bread. It's not as nice. It's not as nice. Bread, you could eat fucking, you could eat a whole pan by yourself once upon a time. Like, now yeah. I know we were all young or whatever, but you could. You, you they're putting stuff in the bread. They're putting stuff in the bread. They're putting George. the stuff to, 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 well, to pretend that we are gluten intolerant. Welcome to the conspiracy, <laughs> the conspiracy cast with George and Tom. Those other conspiracy guys. <laughs> Yeah, no, the, 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 the bread isn't as enjoyable as it was, and I find it very hard to get fresh bread. Very hard to get fresh bread. Yeah. You can't. You're squeezing those pans for days. <laughs> Is that you? I was wondering who those fingerprints were all over the fucking bread with. <laughs> Nothing left of the those bread. Those George-sized fucking hands all over the yeah. bread. Small hands. How long, because people will know you from the picture I'll put up, uh, and like how long has the Fair City is that twi- are you twenty years on Fair City? No, I it was two thousand and one, so eighteen years. Jesus! Oh no, it was two thousand, maybe nineteen years. I am thirty five this year, and I start on the week of my eighteenth birthday. So it's all my adult, adult life. Christ and Christ, above. and I still don't think of myself as a Fair City regular. It's weird. I, I like. Do you know what I mean? I I'm also a smoker, but I don't think of myself as a smoker. Either. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I'm going to give them up. <laughs> or, yeah, like, yeah. I'm, so I'm not like a series regular that I, I, you know, I'm in Fair City all my adult life, but I, I, I kind of, I still think that I'm going to do other things as well. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, but there was, there, you see, you were in at a golden age when there was, in 2001, there was nothing else to compete with telly. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you and the likes of Ashling, who was on a couple of weeks ago, like, ye, ye were the focal point. Like, people talked about... Ye like Love Island, do you know what I mean? Like I, your characters, yeah, that's like mad actually, you, when you, you think know, about it. Yeah, that's... like there was fuck all else. There was no such thing as reality shows. There was no Instagram, fuck all Facebook. There was nothing like YouTube. Really, you know, there was nobody yeah. competing. 
Um, like, and I suppose, yeah, that I'm, I, I suppose when people think back, even when you think about the den, you know, when you watch, like, yeah. you know, and I read an article last night about Don Conroy, you know, draw with Don. Yeah. And he said everywhere that he went, he just felt that he was treated like the like a rock star. And still now, and, and like children's television, they had like generations of every of five years. The den was on for 25 years. So 25. there's five different generations of kids that he meets today and they still think of him like he's fucking rock Bono, star. Like, yeah. He's a rock star. Yeah. He, like, he, he, I, 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 I had a son on. I'm friends with his son. Oh, no way. And he talks about his, his old man. Like he says, he could not. Walk, you could not walk down any street in Dublin with Don. That's mad. People be over for photographs. Like he's fucking the rock. But it's completely different now, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you've got so much to compete with. Like yeah. And it's it's uh, like when you think back in the day when there was only uh, RT one and two. Um, you had kind of a captive audience like, yeah. they fuck on else to do yeah. they couldn't even you know they'd probably read more newspapers back then but like brands and shops and nightclubs they wanted you to you know cut their ribbons and did yeah you told me a bit about this was there enough because <laughs> 18 years of age you just came out of school had you done like where was the acting from then had you done like were you in acting like, yeah, I went to stage like, school stage as, as school, a kid, right. and when I was fourteen, I did a, a kids' TV show called Custer's Last Stand Up, where I played actually uh, a young a young fellow who wanted to be a stand up comedian. When right. I grew up. And uh, so yeah, that was on the BBC, and it was brilliant. And I won a BAFTA, and um, so I went to the BAFTAs at sixteen. So you're kind of a BAFTA winning actor. Is that what you're telling me? Well, I, I didn't want to kind of harp on about it, but like, <laughs> I'm going to put this in the show notes. It's BAFTA just, winning. Uh... I do put that into the into my bio, or yeah. uh, you know. Um, because it's a fucking BAFTA. Yeah. You know? Um, but the... What the fuck was I talking about? So you went from uh, Custer's Last Stand Up. Oh, yeah. So into that. So that's where my uh, where my kind of uh, my love for it. And I was like getting a few bob for doing something that I like. I was like, I definitely want to do this. Yeah. Uh, so back then you had a captive audience. All these people wanted you to do stuff for them. And they were paying loads of money. And I was living at home with my mum, rent free. Beautiful. Uh, loads of money. And I've nutted the show for it. Like, I remember <laughs> looking at P60s and tax returns from when I was 18. I was like, where is all that money? Like, where's all... Where's not, do you know what I mean? And Most now, likely in Lilies, I'd imagine, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, Lilies. And I used to... Because I lived kind of outside Dublin. I lived in Straffan. Um, okay, right. So And it was the Celtic Tigers. So rather than just pay for taxis home from Straffan, you just book in somewhere. You, so you know just what book I mean? in, book like, in on a Thursday what, and stay what? in town for two nights. And, like, it was just proper... <laughs> Uh, absolutely Rob's, made you were like Drake of Dublin at the time like <laughs> made well, a pig of myself I don't, but I thought it was going to be always like that I just thought grand like do you know what I mean and then when I want to go get a mortgage and when I want the banks to treat me seriously <laughs> and not laugh me out of the place um, it'll be grand sure I'll still be on this money but then I forgot that but when you have to get a place of your own and then when you don't work as much and then when the internet age comes along and then you've got all these kind of Instagram mm. bloggers and all those. So they've all taken over all the ribbon cutting and the product placement. <laughs> and, you know, so I'm just kind of, I'm not the Mondo that I once was, you know, it's, it's mad. So, and when, we, like, so f- did you get a four year period, five year period of pure Bon Jovi, like, because four years, yeah. Did you get four years of it? Four years of solid uh, storyline. So it was in maybe forty weeks a year, uh, and the average kind of that you would do in Fair City, if you were kind of if you had decent storylines, you'd be in there fifteen to twenty weeks a year. What? That'd be that'd be quite a lot, you know. So my first three years was forty weeks a year because I was doing this like a long, a long burning teen pregnancy storyline. Yeah. Um. Were you so I pregnant? just thought that that was good. Like I thought I didn't know any difference. I thought this was this is grand. Yeah. You know. Uh, so then after four years, then you must be walking into the canteen in RT like year three, like with a fur coat, no, and like fucking chains on, gone. Where's my fucking latte? No, I'll tell you why. All right, there's actually a funny story. One of the first things I noticed about the RTE canteen, Glen Rowe was on back then, and uh, you would have Glen Rowe. And Fair City, right? So Fair City uh, were the lowly actors. They were the scum in, in when it when it came to the, the canteen because the Glen Row actors, their tables had tablecloths, no wine glasses, stop, and they were waited on. Are you joking me? And Fair City stood with their trays and queued up like a bunch of scangers that you yeah. are. So there was no way, even if you did go in wearing a fur coat, you'd have Miley there going, <laughs> "Please, son, <laughs> hold Please. my beer." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's all. Wow. Yeah, and I think that's why Glen Row doesn't exist anymore because yeah. it was getting a little bit kind of you know it was like apartheid, you know. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fair city, have you here? <laughs> Clean my fucking shoes, yeah. yeah. Um, 
<coughs> now I was doing Custer's Last Stand Up at the time, so I was an outsider looking in, going, "How are they allowing this?" You know, this is scandalous. And like Paul Brennan, Paul Brennan's a huge star. Tony Tormey, but he's holding his tray, and you know, fetching his change out of his pocket to pay for his lunch. Good Jesus! Because we, when did Panto start for you then? Because by the time when I met you, you looked like you could do it with your eyes closed. Like I mean, some had shows you, I did do with my eyes yeah. closed. <laughs> because there was you, you were relatively tame the year I was there. But the stories I'd heard of a couple of. Like with a young Duffy there, like it was just oh, yeah. pure brutality, like how you're putting, like just the party scene afterwards, like. Yeah, and it's mad because it, it, you, your body shouldn't allow you to be able to do two shows a day and then have like a couple of fizzy drinks then afterwards. Yeah. But there was that one particular year that would, I think, with the, the whole show, including the rehearsals, I think it was 29 days and 28 yeah. of the days. We we went out. <laughs> uh, now I'm not, you know, I, 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 you know, I'm not proud of it. Yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but at the time, I, I think I just gone through a breakup, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to like evict all thoughts from my brain and just go on this way. But it was brilliant. Except the only thing was the come down after 28 days of booze and like the drive home from Limerick. Oh, that last day, you know, the the panto blues kind of kicked in. You're standing just freezing uh, in the petrol station, just getting a coffee halfway up at Obama see, like, Plaza. A, like, a poster of someone, you know, give two euro a month to this poor... <laughs> You're like the lucky bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I was just bawling, crying, like trying to adopt alf- uh, dolphins, um, you know, just to make myself feel better. Um, so, yeah, so there, there were some mad times uh, with the El Panto. Did, and was that, was Limerick your first one? Or had no, you been doing it so, for years? Like? Yeah, so I'd started when, so when I was in... Fair City, um, I got asked to do <laughs> Ireland's first reality TV show, Celebrity Farm. Right. Now, I didn't get asked to do, like, they asked, would you like to do um, Ireland's first take on um, on reality TV? They didn't say that it was meant to do with a farm <laughs> or who else the fuck would be on it. It was just, it's going to launch on the Late Late Show. You're going to do a week in a house and it'll be 24-7 filming. And I thought, oh, man, like a mini Big Brother type yeah. thing. Um, and I just thought that would be great crack, but then it was revealed then we were going to be like milking bulls. <laughs> if you know, ever a man I've ever had in this podcast would be so suited to farm work. <laughs> <laughs> it's, You've seen these fucking hands. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, look, but they gave us stupid challenges, do you know what I mean? Like, you know, build a house out of straw bales. Which, yeah, which never happened. Which yeah, never, never happened. I've never yeah. seen it since. Um, <laughs> but Mireille McGuinness was the host of that show. So after that then, I was kind of like, I suppose, relatively high profile. And then I got asked to do this panto in town in Liberty Hall with Alan Hughes. Um, and I did the, the run of the shows. Yeah. And I thought, this is deadly. I thought, this is brilliant. You know, you're connecting with a completely new audience, a different audience every night. Um, and I just think that, I, th- I think, you know, young audiences are very generous. I used to get a great buzz. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, this yeah. Is, this is what, this I, I really want to do this. And I did Panto every year after that. So I've, I've done Panto in Fair City pretty much every year in my adult life. Uh, and I love it. But you even directed one last year, didn't you? Yeah, I directed one for Robert C. Kelly over in, uh, and it was great because it was away. Um, so it was my first time to direct and it yeah. was over in Dundee in Scotland. So I thought, grand, like none of my peers are going to see this. So yeah, it's yeah, absolute yeah. horse shit. Grand, I'll just get in, I'll get out and no one will ever know about it. Um, and I, I managed to get away with it, which, which was great. Um, but I, I really missed being on the stage. I wonder that. Yeah. yeah. Did you look on and go? At the time, Rachel was pregnant. That's my fiance. Uh, she was pregnant and she was choreographing it. So the two of us got to work side by side in a completely different capacity. Um, and I was like, this is great. Sure, we're only here for the rehearsals and then we're gone. We have the Christmas off. Yeah. But we both found that we, we really missed being on the stage. I wondered that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Given that she's like she's a dancer. Yeah. yeah. You're kind of going, oh, from both sides. Like, yeah. 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 Okay, no. Um. And it just kind of made you because, like, oh no, because I do think that I've probably got a little bit more to offer on stage. Um, do you know what I mean? Before yeah. I go down the, the road of directing, but I, I, I still I enjoy the directing, but I still missed being on the stage. Yeah, I could only imagine because you'd be watching on, like, because it is fun, all right, to go, okay, so what I need you to do here, but there just must be a moment where you go, 
Would you just come over to fuck and I'll do it? You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> the, and, and that's the thing. You don't want to insult anyone. So no, no, no. You like you kind of have to allow your cast, your cast as if it's oh. my, my. I have to let my cast, uh, you know, the freedom. But it, it's just like you want to do it for them and say, right, just do it like the way I did. It. Yeah, you know, yeah, copy you, me yeah. exactly. Yeah, I gotta send you a video and just, but that's that's obviously it's not or, not organic, you know. Of course, yeah, of yeah, course, it has to be an organic process. It has to grow. <laughs> <laughs> so, how many days a week now are you in, in in or how many weeks would you be in in Fair City? Um, so this year, uh, so they give you a kind of a minimum contract. Yeah, you know what I mean, so this year, uh, fourteen weeks, and that's pretty much all I'll, I'll probably end up doing this this year. Um, so that that'd be relatively quiet. Um, but it's still more than one week per month. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, if anything else was to come along, um, which it didn't, but if anything was to come <laughs> along, I would be available to do it. And do you do you still put yourself out there for that? Like, you know what I mean? Do you still go to auditions like and stuff with a rolling contract with something like that? Are you kind of going, oh, no, I'll be grand, like, you know? Or to your grand, which you're doing that. Like, I mean, because they understand that you're not going to survive on just 14 weeks work. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, they'll availability check me three months in advance. You know, so I'll know what I'm doing for the next three months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that gives me a chance then to try and fill in the gaps. But I'm not really, put, like I, I got rid of my agent Did uh, you? three years ago. Because I realised that I was just doing Panto and Fair City. <laughs> Panto and Fair City. And it was pretty much the same contract each year. You know, so yeah. why am I giving, you know, why am I paying, you know, 10% of, of everything, it, you know, for stuff that I can clearly just get myself. And I know how to write an invoice, it's grand life. Yeah, yeah so yeah. And now I know, how, but before I, I, I used to be very polite, and like nearly apologising, you know, it's like someone rings you up and say, would you be able to do this? And yeah. What's your fee? And I go, I get really, really shy then. Uh, but now, obviously, I'm not because I have a child and yeah. um, I've no child problem. Child needs feeding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's the thing I was, like, and I had to kind of, I didn't, I never had an agent. There was two or three times where we talked with people, all right, and we just couldn't agree. And I think it was probably just my temperament too. Like, I was going, what the f... Because I came from a construction background where you... You, you know your ha- price and... You know your price and there's, it's not your price, it's the, the brand that is you price. Yeah, yeah. It's not the same, you know, it's, I'm not the same. So you've never been shy about... Give me fucking money. Yeah. I, I need money. Yeah, do you know the fucking the car isn't going to run itself? And it, but that was a peri- I, there was a little period I suppose at the beginning where I was nearly again half apologetic because you're going. I know there's no physical product I'm making for you here. Like yeah, but, yeah. But, but how would you know? Like you just know. Like how would you have known? Like what people get paid? Like what's the standard? Or you, did you just come up with a figure yourself saying I can do it for this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was speaking. But then are you kind of afraid then that you like? That you're underselling yourself. It was, do you know, it's it's actually quite refreshing once you kind of set a price in your for yourself because it was actually it was my sister who said it to me. She goes, "You just have to just you have to be willing to not work be for to walk if away. they won't fucking pay you that price." Because she, that's but the, have you ever kind of asked for a price and they go, "Okay," and then yeah. you go, oh. <laughs> "Sicken, <laughs> sicken," a few times. But then also you need to be that that, that discipline needs to kick in too. You go, "No, nope, that's that." But yeah. yeah, absolutely. There's a few delicious ones I've gotten. I've gone, oh, you And you know that there's, yeah. you could have maybe even there's put a in bag there, you know, more money in it. Another like, 500 on there. Oh, yeah. I've, I've done a few, like, where I, like, I did one, a big one last year, and I named the price with my tongue on my cheek, like, you know. Yeah. And they went, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was only after that I found the person that had the year before, previous, oh, for the love of Jesus, got about uh, fucking three times the uh, amount, like, oh, yeah. Went, oh, you. Fuck yeah! Because you can undersell yourself too, where they think you're you're not worth it. So you go, eh, you know what? I want somebody more expensive. If it's a uh, like if it's it's somebody like a fucking a government owned fucking branch. Oh yeah, and yeah. You go. Oh, they actually want somebody who's going to hit him for a big price because they go, he must be brilliant. So because that's know what, what I mean? they base it on. Yeah, that's they what base they base it on. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, there's a golf club. This is weird. Uh, weird to say way, but there's a golf club. Uh, Baltray oh, is yeah. one of Ireland's top golf courses, right? It's a Lynx You're fond of golf, aren't you? Uh, well, I, I used to be. I haven't swung a club now since I had the baby. Right. And, and I don't miss it because it's actually, do you know what? It's fucking torture. It's four and a half hours of just just being failure. shit. Failure. Yeah, failure, yeah. It's just <laughs> I, I'm in a WhatsApp group of lads. They want to go golfing tomorrow, and I've actually just I've actually gone completely deathly silent on mute, the thing. Mute it's notifications, like, please. But anyway, th- this golf course um, during the recession, um, are we allowed to say the R word? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, just bags uh, of that in this grand line. Um, <laughs> they reduced their prices because people didn't have the money, and they lost all their American tourists. 
Of course they did. They lost. And then the year after, they put their price, they doubled their prices, priced all the Irish people out of it, but they got all their American and their Japanese tourists and they're out the fucking door because all people look at sometimes yeah. is just the price. Yeah, oh yeah, and that's how, that's it. Well, they've done, te- they did a test, you know, one of these kind of, I suppose, uh, nearly private eye investigators on food, you know, one of these, and it was the, it was the marketing of, of food in, industry in, in Ireland and they had beans. They just went, let's take something as basic as beans and they'll have based the exact same. They will be the same can of beans, but let's label them with the white label, black writing for 39 cents. Yeah. And just call them beans. And when you turn around, read the ingredients, new, exact same. And then they had this fucking lush golden label charged 249 for them. And exact Delicious same. Delicious ba- baked beans. They were like fucking luxury baked beans, like whatever, yeah. with no difference because they were the same thing. On the back, when you turned around and read it, it was the exact same. 249. Uh, nobody touched the white ones. Oh my god! Nobody touched yeah. them. Yeah, so yeah. we're all fools. Like. We're all tits when it comes to this. Like, there's so. another thing that comes that creeps in. You know, we were just talking about money and stuff like that. You know, sometimes you might get asked to do, you know, um, like a, a, a reality TV show, or yeah. a, you know, and they say, so yeah, so this would be great, and we think you'd be great on our show. Um, so it's you know, it's it's twenty grand for charity for the winning for the thing. And it's, you know, and one one thousand euro for a charity of your choice, uh, for you know, for any of the runners up, yeah. and you're like, okay, that's great. And what about you know, an actual fee for, yeah, for my time, you know? yeah, but, yeah. You know, just it's for charity. It was like, all right, who's presenting it? Let's say Dermot O'Leary's presenting it. It's like, okay, cool. And is Dermot, you know, is he doing his thing for, for for charity? Like that that annoys me as well. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you wouldn't get away with that in the UK because they just, you know, they well, you get slaughtered. Like, you get, yeah. absolutely. So you have to, you know what I mean. You have to pay people for their services and not try and dick it up. Well, I've gotten a few. I don't get them so much anymore. Where you go, okay. and like if it is an in, total inconvenience to me, then I won't. But like, and it like sorry, the wrong way. If it's very convenient for me, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah. like, if and if it's something that you like personally support oh, yeah. or something like that, you know what I mean? You know, absolutely, that's fine. But there's some people just come out of the woodwork and they say, oh. "Well, you know, we've got a we've got a strictly coming up, and we'd love you to be the MC, and you know, it's in Longford or it's in Bell Mullet." <laughs> and uh, sure, we look after your uh, your few drinks for the night, you know. Yeah, heaven forbid. Yeah, no, I actually want to drive away to fuck from that place afterwards. So yeah. the, no thanks to the drinks. But you know the price of the drinks that you were going to give me? I'll have that. i have that, that, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, I was going to drink much. a lot. Yeah. I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was actually going to drink 600 quid's worth. That I, yeah, I've, I've actually got a real problem. I was going to buy a round as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the way to deal with those. And it was... Does that sound very anti-charity, does it? No, it doesn't. It, we've, I've, I've definitely talked about this. And the sort of people that listen to this totally agree. Yeah. They okay. go, yeah. Like, you wouldn't walk up to a bricklayer and go, here, I'm going to need that fucking a wall built. And for Barrettstown. For Barrettstown. Just for, but the, yeah. like, if it was even something as heavy as Barrettstown, like, I get the, I've gotten some random shit, like, going... Where and you know it's a fuck up of an event too. Like I, it'd be one thing if it was a really well run event. You're going, oh, I can see where. You, okay, you're genuinely making good money for a good thing here. Like, but I'll get yeah. these fucking random things where they nearly go, uh, will you run the whole thing for us and host it and everything? And we don't really know if we'll make any money at the end of it or rent. But I think it's worth a shot. You know, uh, like yeah. no. what the, f- you know, yeah, it is an odd one. Like, yeah, really, yeah. But with, with that, but they, what I, I never even considered that when you were talking about like the ribbon cutting and stuff like that. Like, where you, where did you find that? Like, I suppose the because there was no traffic social media wise to to track your popularity, or whatever. But like, even a friend of mine, now I say friend, I don't, I haven't seen him in a while. But I remember he putting up a picture at a Dubs match. Yeah, and it was with you, and he was so delighted, the happiness on his face. That's he was like, mad. "I went for Commando." I'm like. It, and that wasn't an ironic thing. Like, no, it was, he was, it was actual. He was. It was pure retro moment for him. Yeah, like because yeah. he would have watched Fair City when you were eighteen. He was probably eighteen as well. It's mad, isn't you it? know. Yeah. And he was like, "Fucking as same as hanging out with Don Conroy for a minute." Yeah. You know what I mean? He was like, <laughs> "Hey, yeah. you know, yeah. like other than having a fucking you know an etch a sketch and a stickle bricks as well, just to go pure nineties on the thing." Like, yeah, I you know. I, like when you think back, like. If, I suppose if you were a bit more clever, I could have probably turned it into something a little bit more you know, monetizable or, you know, I could, I I probably should have been thinking more entrepreneurially back then 
uh, rather than now. You know yeah. what I mean? Just, <laughs> I know. Yeah. Hindsight's fucking class. I know. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because even that, like that, like as you talk about Don, I remember uh, Richie. Who would he writes for Fair City every so often? Oh, Richie yeah. Conroy. He yeah, writes yeah. for Fair City. But oh, he, yeah, I know what I mean. Yeah. Too, yeah. But he um, he was telling me like Don. Don is the Don, like really. Yeah, there's a reason why Don has a fucking class holiday home, like Don. Because he when, Don never worked for RT. He contracted RT. Yeah. So every owl picture, every fucking landscape, Don owned it. No. If he didn't, if he didn't, RT, RT would, own, would it. own it. Yeah. So a fucking Don right now could cost you five hundred quid just to get a picture of the fucking seagulls, like. Wow. Do you know? And Don owns the, you know. Yeah. And you're and going, that's crafty why he's there, yeah. Don. Yeah. Crafty fucking Don. I just often wondered, was he a little bit rock and roll, Don? Of course he was. Of course yeah. he was. To have the neck to make owls. To just go, I'm a fucking legend at owls. Suck it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, there was... like there was there Because was, he taught us how to draw an owl and it was so easy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You'd just be raging going, why didn't I think of coming <laughs> on the telly five days a week showing people the same owl? It's, He's actually got a fucking neck. Well, did, 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 which is something owls don't typically have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> but you see, he, he had it down to a T because he was came across as a nice fella. He came across your nice fucking uncle or something. Like, whereas any art teacher I ever met was always a fucking frustrated, sour bastard. Like I fucking hated my art teacher. I, I, we had, I, the two I can think of in school were just sour bastards. Like Yeah, she, this one was awful. She was, uh, like, she, I did it for my junior cert. Did you? Did it for my junior cert. And there was only one art teacher in the school. Right. And we, she was legendarily, can you say that? She was... Yeah. It was legendary the uh, how fucking horrible she was and <laughs> shit. And if you're listening, <laughs> if you're listening, here's what it is. Strong possibility she's not. She's like, probably you know. not. No. Uh, I, I, uh, yeah, so she, I, I hate, she made me hate it so much. And I liked art. But I loved it in sixth class when you were doing PVA glue and sticking everything together. And I thought, that'd be grand, yeah. you know. Uh, because you've seen my hands. They're not construction hands. They're not. Uh, they're not farmy hands. They're fucking dainty actor shit hands. <laughs> would have been perfect for pottery. Oh my God, you would have been amazing. Yeah, but uh, she made me hate it so much. <laughs> so much that I didn't do it for me leaving. I actually ended up actually only doing five subjects for me leaving because I fucking hated art so much. And the only o- other class that had a bit of room in it was construction. And I, I just used to sit in the back. I said, sir, can I use the lathe? <laughs> I used, to, I used to make ballast sit down, all sit down the band. shut up with you shut up just keep rolling your fags <laughs> yeah so that's all uh, so yeah so art teachers you're dead right but did they was there anybody else in your family acting then? no I'm the only gobshite uh, my mum would, be, would have been you know kind of uh, quite extrovert um, but like I mean you know it was just pitch and put and drinks in, in the club for my mum and dad like just normal yeah yeah normal people you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then I, I came and my dad was in, into business and computers and IT and stuff like that my sister's the same uh, and then I, I I got into the old acting it's a weird one isn't it like, yeah it's a fun and it's, we have, I always have these little moments especially if I'm on stage and I'm going or even acting in scenes in Fair City you go we're all just pretending to be these characters m- making up stories and we're doing it in front of cameras and then we're editing them down and then we're showing them on the teddies and then people are watching them on the teddies. And believing them and to believing degree, them. Yeah. Were, but, but knowing that it's a lie, but still going along with it and it's fucking very weird. That's, see, that's the thing I was, I was going to get around to because like, Panto is almost easy to sell because it's like, ah! yeah. you know, it's so ludicrously outside of reality. Same yeah. as like, when I did, people were like, oh, you're very good in Damon Ivor. I'm like, I was playing the, essentially a panto character. It yeah. was, I, I'm not obviously... It's nice and far removed from... It's so yeah. far removed. And the accent, we're going, you really nailed the accent. I was really... Because that was the most ridiculous accent I was trying to do. Like, uh, Yeah, but, and but people bought it. People bought it, but, it, but I think people, people still knew it was very silly. Yeah. You know, it was very silly. Yeah. So it was easy to... You can go, ah, yeah, that's just that. Yeah. Here you go. And when people meet you, they go, that was gas. But... Because you're playing it straight on Fair City, which I don't, I've never, I don't have ever. I did one kind of, we'll call it an indie movie. Right. Where it was playing it straight. It was. I was like an angry hurling coach, like, which yeah. <laughs> wasn't a million miles from <laughs> a country hurling coach yeah, yeah. who was quite angry and yeah. a guard. <laughs> I'm from Tipperary. Well, there you go. Yeah. You know? so, yeah. Which is, yeah, wall to wall. Yeah. Wall to wall. But like for you, like that, that pops up, does it? In your head, you're going, oh, Jesus. We're selling a real scenario here, like, you oh, know 100%, what I mean? 100%, yeah, and, and, and it's just, I go, 
like, this is actually very silly. You know, in my yeah, head, yeah, I'm that's going, even sillier. You know like, what I mean? We're we're selling this and they're buying it, uh, but we all know that it's a lie. Where has this come from? You know, and people, <laughs> yeah. like, what, like, do you know what I mean? Shakespeare and all—they were just all making up stories and lying to people. And people like I struggle with that sometimes. Is that, that weird? No. no, well, maybe it's not weird in this exact environment because I think about that all the time. Like, because it's like. Even, you know, the, like the goofy, like people get nearly half disappointed with me when I come off stage and I'm like, they go, oh, you're not, you're not a bit mental off the stage. I go, no, uh, if I was as mad as that fucker, I'd be licking windows and arrested right now. Yeah. Like, yeah. but it, quickly they, they gather the thoughts and they go, oh, okay, because that is very silly what you're doing up there. But do people, do you, have you found in the past, like we'll say owl ones, yeah. and especially when it was so immersive when you were, you were in, in the mid 2000s, like were you finding people were going, were nearly consoling you for certain things or it's mad actually what's happened they like people got there was a lot more anger back then towards me what's that and I don't know it was because I was a prick um, or a nickname like Mondo too like yeah <laughs> but like it, w- it would be weird like we like a, a, anywhere outside of Dublin would have been absolute fucking chaos you know but I ended up there'd be trouble like everywhere everywhere I went Stop. not trouble but there'd be like you in know in a nightclub I mean? like or ah, a pub yeah, or something be Mondo like. you faggot you know that kind yeah. of thing so so maybe someone wouldn't recognise me and it would be someone's girlfriend and he wouldn't be comfortable with that at all do you know what I mean so or the alpha male that, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so yeah, that yeah. would you know what I mean there was a lot of that and that's completely calmed down in the last few years since social media and I think since I think I don't know is there a better understanding of notoriety or is there a better understanding of the fame and culture but like lads are so much more accepted they would never you would never see a lad coming up to you in in 2002 asking you for an autograph or you know giving you any bit of attention at all whereas now it just seems to be very 50-50 with the people that come up to you the people who are arsed do you know what I mean I think people are 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 I think blokes especially are kind of getting better at kind of letting their emotions out a small bit. Like, because I grew up in very much hard man territory. Like, yeah, yeah. So if, like, you would, if, you saw, if you saw some prick yeah. over there getting loads of attention, you'd be like, like you know. Oh, it was well, all, it was all shouldering fellas yeah, in the fucking yeah. in bars and nightclubs. Like, yeah, it was yeah. all, well, you know, guys just wouldn't yeah. let it's that guys down. Like, it's all. mad. It's, uh, but I don't know what it, what that is. Is it... it is it because people are more accessible? I are, think so. Yeah. I, I think so. And people are... I, and... Probably lads are fucking easy, more easier going at letting them emo- like letting emotion like they don't have that one dimensional furious all the fucking time kind yeah, of a thing. Yeah, like, do you yeah. know? Now, don't get me wrong, there still is that. Like, like I yeah. mean, I I've done gigs in midlandy towns where nothing happens. Like, yeah, and yeah. you'll be maybe go for a couple of drinks with a couple of the other comics afterwards, and just randomly. These fucking half head fucking Nostra liquors will want to fucking square up and fight you. And you're like, dude, this isn't 1992. Yeah. Just relax. Go on a holiday. Get a ride somewhere. Like, you know, just relax. Oh, the gig have gone well. Like, yeah. Oh, that's country. when. That's when. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because right. the alpha male, I, I'm the funny cunt. And you're like, I'm sure you are. But they paid me to come in and do this. I'm gone again. Like, yeah, I'll be gone yeah, again in yeah. an hour or two. Like, relax. No, that's very f- few and far between. Do you, oh, get, do you get people trying to be funny? <sighs> like you wouldn't fucking believe really? so like and it's he, like it might be just in a random and you could see obviously someone fancies themselves as the fucking comedian uh, of the group and they're you know they're waiting for their moment to impress you and or, you can see it straight and sometimes I don't really cop it but herself cops it a lot really like, yeah, just like, yeah. Uh, like and I but like we were especially when you're at weddings and stuff and okay. because everybody's oh, what do you do? oh you know and the odd like like I was at a wedding recently and it was a lot of your man was he was from the states but um so a lot of his friends were over, like, and he kept, they kept, this one guy who found out that I was a stand-up, like, yeah. he was obviously the funny guy, and he'd done a couple of improv classes or something, and he was over, and he was trying to do impressions from around the world for me, uh, as I'm uh, heading to the Jacks, like, uh, like, no. like oh, lad, this is getting fucking weird for both of us now, come on, come on, like, come on, just fucking relax, will you? But you do, like, it was funny, I was talking with a... At a, a chap, Will Flory, is an MMA fighter, and I was going, "How do you introduce?" Oh, I know him. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. How do you introduce? You know, when you're introduced as a, obviously he's got the two fucked up ears. You yeah. know, he's got a big fucking cool scar running down through his eye. You don't mistake this fella from being your accountant, like yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. But I said, "Do you get an intro that you know?" And he goes, "Yeah." So it does make it a bit weird. You get the alpha male in the in the group, and you're like, "Dude, relax." I Tenton. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look, you know, I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm throwing bales on my life, and you're going. No, that's fine. I'm not here to fight, you yeah, know. Yeah. And also, I'm not there to tell jokes either, like yeah, you know. Yeah. So it was funny because he then asked me, and I went, "Fuck, actually, yeah, 
Yeah. It's a weird one, like. Yeah, I don't get people up, coming up to me kind of acting out scenes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of the pluses. Well, that's the other side is that there's no definitive thing to Mondo or a straight actor. Yeah. Because you have the range of emotions, but expect everybody expects, oh, this guy's always funny. You're like, yeah, nah, I'm yeah. a sour bastard 90% of the time. And like. though, did, I think people, don't they, because I've, I've been in the, in, you know, in the company of, of stand-ups where, you know, they're talking to punters and people are not afraid to let you know their disappointment that mm. you are not a gas cunt 24-7. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're that, not, yeah. That's exactly it. Like, I've got lads who, I remember this, it was very strange. Now, he was full of drink, but it was, it was really troubling him. A lad I played rugby with years ago and he was, he was good. He was a good player, but he was, um, he came up to me after a gig hadn't seen him in about six years and he was just staring at me as there was two or three chaps we were chatting or whatever and yeah. he was just staring at me but like but you weren't funny that what's going on like what <laughs> and, like, and it was really troubling that a full half an hour had gone by of him watching me make a room laugh Yeah, and all he could go think about was no we didn't know each other that well we played but it was just that was the door slamming there that was the door slamming Oh, they're off out. Oh, they're gone, are they? Yep. Grand. Free gaff. Nice. Let's get drinking. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it was, yeah, it was, it was a weird, and, but straight away, yeah, people will tell you. That's the, and that's, you live and die, I suppose, by that shit on, because it's live in the fucking moment. Yeah. It quite literally, there's no hiding behind anybody else's words. You're quite literally, you're going to die in your hole or you're going to make them laugh. Yeah. And people will come up to you and immediately tell you afterwards, like, if it was great. Or if it was shite, like, so... You... Yeah, so actually the thoughts of stand-up is fucking terrifying. I, I I commend and fucking bow down to anybody who can get up there and bear their soul. It's weird. It's a weird one. Like, yeah. I wonder was I fucking tortured in another life or something like that, yeah. like, that I need to do this to myself, like, but... You... But, yeah, you're a dad and everything now. Yeah, yeah. Jeez, you're now, lad. So, yeah, so Frankie turned one there a couple of weeks ago, and it's, like... It's the best ever. Like, you're going to really, really love it. Yeah. But the novelty wears off very quickly. Does it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, that's that's an honest thing to say. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because the well, amount... No, like, I mean, that's very unfair. But, like, it's, like, it's Jesus Christ. For the first six months, she slept all the way through the night, 12 hours from 9 till right, 9. Right, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, my God, we're after getting one of the sound babies. Yeah. Brand, and we're going to be those you hear about tricks these... yeah. where we'll say, yeah, no, she's sleeping through the night. And, you know, it's, it's actually fine. We're, we're actually going to go again now, you know? <laughs> And the whole time, anytime we did say it, there was always other smug marrieds going, ah, uh, you know, you, you say that now and, you know, she's, if that's not going, that's just a phase. Yeah. She's never going to sleep for you. And we're like, nah, no, it's grand. We thought we had it so, we thought we, we did it real. You know, we, we did everything by the book and obviously we're really natural parents. Fuck. It was just, we were very lucky for a couple of months. Yeah. And now she just wakes up three, four times a night. <laughs> Haven't slept properly in, in a year. Um. But like we'll do, I'll do something. So we're this is my mother in law's house. We're waiting to move into our house, which won't be for another couple of months. All oh, right, yeah, yeah, deadly. Um, so uh, every now and again, uh, Rachel's mum will see us absolutely fucking bollocks. We're we're in a box room, yeah. the two of us and the the cot, um, and it's very very cramped. And if she wakes up, we're all awake, and, and that's it. But yeah. the odd time, Rachel's mum will say, "I'll take her in with me tonight." Uh, and we go, oh God, you'd be nearly crying with the, you know, because that's a really nice thing yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah. And you get a full night's sleep and it's just fucking amazing. Fuck. So, yeah. Because you don't, like, like I've kind of, people, the one thing people give it a, blokes keep it, are you scared? I'm like, well, no, and I'm not scared of the fucking thing. Like, I'm just wondering how much fucking work is going to be in this yoke. Like, because I have yeah. a lot on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that that was the thing. Every time I thought I was tired before or busy mm. or anything like that, it's it's just a completely new thing. But I don't know. Is your missus very fifty fifty? Is she going like as in Rachel is very fifty fifty? As in like if she's put in X amount of work with with Frankie, she'll let me know, and I'll you know like this morning, Frankie woke up at half six, and it was Rachel's turn to go down. Yeah, with the baby, so I got to lie in. So she said, I'll be back up at half eight. See, And I, she was back up, bang on half eight, because I gave her two hours in the last two days. So, she's like, Rachel's I, on the fucking ball. When I think it, it is. Him. Yeah, I think I think actually, because that's a very strict measurement of a thing. But I think she is probably fairly 50-50. I'd say I will get the elbow in the back, like, you know, like, yeah. here, up, up to fuck. Yeah. You know, so it's I, I would imagine so, yeah. So one of my mates is, like, 
he's very lucky because his missus is a control freak and she oh. she wanted to do all the feeds and she wanted to do all oh. the things and doesn't trust him with all the stuff. I was like, oh God, where do you get, where do you get one of those? <laughs> That'd be lovely not to be trusted, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, again, I don't know. Like, like sh- there's certain things all right now where she go, no, nah, you're grand time. Yeah. Stay away from that. So uh, that'd be class. We got, like, we, uh, the great thing about, I thought Rachel was going to be like uh, Momzilla about, you know, like the new things. Yeah. Like, she, uh, you know, because she follows bloggers and all these things. Oh, so, does she? So she'd know what the fucking, the, the Mac Daddy cool fucking pram <laughs> is and stuff, you know what I mean? And you go into Mamas and Papas or wherever and it's all like two grand for a piece. you got to take a five year lease plan on the fucking yeah, things. Like, and yeah, and I was like, that's not going to happen. She's like, no, absolutely, you're dead right. And we got, like, we got this uh, thing called Info Baby. Uh, they haven't given me any money for this, by the way. Uh, <laughs> three hundred and fifty quid for a three and one a pram buggy car seat, the whole lot, and it's fucking brilliant. It's some of them you need a science degree to fold and get into the yeah. car. This is if you haven't bought your one yet. No, that that's that's part. That's the that's one of the the bits of it there on the floor. Um, the that look that looks as good as anything I've ever seen. Yeah, I don't know. That's the cheap one, the cheapest ones on the market, and it's fucking easy. Like, and, but so and what the fuck are you going to be doing with him? Like, like whatever, but the car seat has to be right. But as yeah. myself was kind of saying to me, going, I said, come here, they're, they don't need to go through a 60 mile an hour crash test. Like, nobody's, pu- yeah, yeah. Where are we pushing the fucking thing? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, but, but, oh. but it's this thing, it's amazing how the companies market uh, their they stuff. Play, they play, they play on to your, the yeah, new yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's one of those things where it's a completely different now to 20 years ago because most of the new mums are still living with their parents. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The parents have a few bob. And so, do you know what I mean? So yeah, they're, they're yeah, tapping yeah. into that market there, which I think is really fucking cynical. No, fair play to them. I can't begrudge anyone. I'd do the same bob. myself. I was making push chairs or whatever. I'm charging 10 grand from. Yeah, like, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, there, yeah. No, absolutely. There yeah. we talk about like the golf courses and the beans and all the rest <laughs> oh, of it. Oh, yeah. Charge fucking two grand and put McLaren around the fucking side of it. They make a fast car, the don't thing. they? Like, there's, yeah. That one there is the image of another one that's out there, but it's it's like five times the, yeah, the price. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get one of them. They're fucking daddy. That'll and suit me. Easy. Listen, look at the buckets of shit we were pushing around in. Yes. Yeah. Well, I like I have 29 cousins. I like I was the 29th cousin. There was 28 other babies in my fucking silver cross, you know, and Stop. then that was, and and uh, that silver cross pram was actually retired out to Leopardstown race courses where they sold Mars bars out of it. What? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know the, there's other people. Get your Mars bars. Yeah, get your Mars And like, you know, so you go in and the Mars bars are, are 50p each. Uh, but then on your way out, because they've sold fuck all of them, yeah. it was three for 50. And you yeah. know for a fact when you read this item not to be sold individually. They're definitely out of a multi-pack yes, too, loud, uh, straight yeah. out of Musgraves. Like, fun yeah, yeah. size Mars. Why are they fun size? There's no fucking crack in a bar that size. Nah, nah. Fuck off. No. Fun size. Fun size should be triple the fucking size. If Absolutely, you're t- yeah. yeah. And, oh, and speaking of which, uh, you have to be minding yourself these days because you're getting married. Has yes. she got you eating like a fighter yet? Like um, well, fucking we, steamed broccoli and fucking you get to lick a chicken breast see, and that's it the thing it. about it is she's shite at eating like she loves shite food like she we would go if we we don't go anymore because it's not fucking worth it I like my bit of grove right yeah. so we go into a nice restaurant and there'll be loads of fucking daddy things on the yeah, menu yeah 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 and she like goes, foamed crab and whatnot. oh really. well now that's a little bit I'm a wanker by the way I, I yeah I've turned into a total food really wanker. yeah yeah oh food uh, foam wanker F- foam yeah I'm a wanker. Very Celtic tiger, isn't yeah. it? The phone. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's back but for me. She won't like if there's anything green on it. Whatever. Like, I mean, I, we'd go into a nice place, yeah. and it'll be where's the nuggets? Right. So it's sh- like you know what I mean. It's, it means then we end up getting fucking hammered. You know what I mean? Because yeah. we're not eating. You know, so we go out and we get a babysitter for the night. <laughs> we go for a meal, <laughs> but it's not really a meal because Have we got we the goujons. Well, yeah, the, the goujons, <laughs> like and barbecue sauce and chips. So she won't. So we're trying to eat healthy now. Um, I love that notion that you go out to like a fucking uh, Michelin like, star, Blue Book, fucking top end. <laughs> like go up to McNeen's there in Black yeah, Line, yeah, yeah. and yeah, she'll ask for the nuggets. Oh Jesus! Yeah, or she'll say, you know, um, is there fish in that? Like, you know, yeah, or yeah, like yeah. she just. The fish thing is fucking weird. Like, my missus is from Dublin. She's from fucking Dorky. And yeah. none of her family eat fish. I'm like, lads, come on. She won't, she won't eat fish. And Teresa will do, this is the mother-in-law, she'll yeah. do fish. Um, and she'll try to do it while we're out of the house. Right. Because when Rachel comes in, she smells the fish cooking Gone. in the house. She's like, ma'am. You know, and she's trying to dry clothes in the in the uh, in the kitchen where yeah. the, the cooker is, and all the clothes smell like fish. Then as well, <laughs> she doesn't like it. Um, yeah, so food. Yeah, we're trying to eat well, trying to look good for the wedding. So I, um, 
it's shit because Rachel doesn't cook, so I'm the cook as well. Oh, are you? Yeah. So if I'm making a bolognese and trying to like chop up the the mushrooms and the peppers and onions, hide them in it, is it? Like hide them in it. You know what I mean? And she's like, that tastes really, really nice. Is there anything? I was like, no, there's nothing in that. Just a little bit of uh, that gas, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like when I sneak in fish sauce into like a fucking curry or something oh, like that. Oh, like, the oyster like, sauce. You like the oyster yeah, yeah. sauce? Yeah, yeah. And it's like why? And like it smells like a fucking rat's hole. Yeah. In, uh, from the bottle, but you, a couple of drops in that, like, and it's top Do you quality. Cook with bavril. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. just put, I just first time ever I saw a bottle in jar in, in the in the supermarket the other day. I grabbed it and I, I lumped a load of that into my bolognese, and it was very, very nice. But it's just it's just a high density fucking beef stock. Beef stock, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got, got that kind of lovely kind. Oh, of, it does. You're pure Moorish. I think it's stuff. called uh, umami. Umami. Oh, umami. look at you! Yeah, like, yeah. Look it's at like, you. was it the seventh taste? That's the, we were only talking about this the other night. The chefs were basically saying that it, it should be made illegal because it's a, uh, it's a like a like a performance enhancing. Yeah, yeah, yeah performance yeah. enhancing for food. And you're like, yeah. yeah, but it's not bad for you, like MSG. So yeah, umami. Yeah, yeah, it's great a, taste. Marmite. That's the same as well, is it? Marmite has an umami kind of a thing. It does. I think I wasn't. Yeah, yeah I've given. I've never. It a, I just don't like the look of marmite. What I say isn't it? Yeah, it does look like shit. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, and you can you're get over that. It, when you spread it on, on the it white It never bread. looks good. There's yeah. no way, you know, it most things like you can dress up. wiped your... Yeah, it does look yeah. like you took a slice of bread and wiped your hole with it. Like yeah, it's, yeah. It, yeah. See, I can say this, you see, don't, don't you worry. Grand. This is the world of podcasting. There are truckers... I just realised I've been holding this mic really, really tight. Have you? Yes. Like, I'm sweating <laughs> on it. Like, it's like you're kind of like, yeah, see... I'm, I'm not used to this, so... No, and it is, like, I mean, they are kind of heavyish mics. There's a bit of weight to these fuckers, all right? But, and normally, like, if I have a stand set up, it is easy just to kind of keep your face in order with it, like, whatever. Yeah, but yeah. when it is in your hand, and, yeah, and when you, especially, like, this is, you've just popped your cherry, like, so you're yeah, gripping so the I'm fucking just, thing, like, you're white I, I really this. want this to work, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, nobody ever complains. Do Grand. I get, what I get is, if a question is ever asked on it, you'll get somebody, somewhere in the country will answer it for me. Yeah, that's the only interaction I get off people, or people going class. So there's been no one like being racist or homophobic, Renton. Listen, everybody that listens to this knows that there's no point. I've had one or two emails of lads, and you're kind of going, "Go away to folk." Yeah, you're pissing into the wind, whinging at me. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what yeah, you can yeah. do? Yeah, Stick, don't yeah. listen. Just, just don't listen. There you yeah, go. That's don't the, listen. That's to the beauty it. of podcasts. Yeah, it's beautiful. You can yeah. just pause or unsubscribe, whatever the fuck you want. Like, yeah. and there's because I got one. <laughs> I got an email. Guy was listening to a podcast from like quite literally 150 podcasts ago. Wow. And he was going, I was laughing at Brexit because Brexit was on the cars. I'm like, this sounds like the maddest thing. And this thing was of- before they, 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 they fucking voted for Wait, it, was it? Like it was coming, it, was, it must have been in around it, you know? It yeah. Was quite literally 150 podcasts ago. Like, Jesus. and there was, it, uh, this fella gave me this fucking long spiel how Ireland was a bitch and all the rest of it. And, like Britain is fucking, and he was just he was so pro Brexit. Like, and I'm reading through it, going, okay, there's a couple of spelling mistakes in there, so that's never a good sign. And then at the bottom, we signed off, with, and just to let you know, I'm an Irish guy living in England. I was like, you, I'm so tempted to go. Oh god, you see, but you can't I didn't argue with that. Yeah. I actually did reply, and I was quite nice. I said, look, I don't give a fuck what you think, but this is my podcast. Don't listen if you don't want. But yeah. thanks very much. But I, the irony was, I didn't want to point out the irony of going, you're a foreigner living in a place that based the premises of Brexit of fucking out all the foreigners. Yeah, <laughs> like, so you, you, you're you voting for this thing that th- these people don't fucking want you it's there. It's kind of like yeah. a Jewish fellow going, Nazis are fucking class. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, maybe that's a bit extreme, but yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Well, like, yeah, Jesus Christ. There is a fucking... So And when so when does the, when is the wedding? Uh, so August, um, August 15th. Yeah, in Spain over in Nerca my mom lives over there does she um, so it'll be like a kind of a you know my, my mom will be hosting it nearly do you know Dandy. what I mean so it's kind of cool she lives over there all year round comes home every couple of months just to see her grandkids um, so we're having our wedding over there and it's going to be just really really small seven tables yeah just fucking we were kind of ruthless with the um, you have to be don't you yeah, yeah we were ruthless we were just like because I've got like you know ten aunties and we've like fifteen aunties and uncles between us, so we were like right so, immediate family, aunties and uncles, no cousins and twelve friends each. Fuck yeah yeah. yeah. That's and all you were you number do. thirteen. You were number thirteen. Oh that's right, no George. I yeah. know, I yeah. know, I know. But it was like you know. It's... And you know you're she's, you're due around that time. Yeah as well, exactly. Aren't you? So yeah, I was exactly. like I just won't. I won't. Uh... That, do you know? And I knew you'd be considerate about that kind of thing. Like, yeah. So thanks very much for not inviting me. Honestly, mm. I'm, I'm delighted. I'm actually delighted. Yeah. Thanks no, well, very much. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
So the wedding, the, the link to my wedding gifts anyway. Yeah. Is, uh, do, have you heard about this? Wedding gifts. No, what? No. You, sorry. I, like, oh, I, by the way, during our wedding, to go back to, is my wife a control freak? I almost had, I had very little input. Yeah. Uh, she just would come to me with three options of each thing she needed to, my verification on. Yeah. And she would go, what, those three. And I'd go, middle one. Cool. We're going to go with the other one. Okay. <laughs> so she just wanted to make sure. It, like, she wanted, she, she would go uh, rate all three. And I'd go, six out of ten, nine out of ten, uh, eight out of ten. Okay. Uh, so we'll go with the eight out of ten because I think we're both happy on that one. That's grand. Well, and okay. it worked. She had it down to an algorithm that worked. Yeah. I was happy with everything. Then I wasn't pissed off on anything, but she had it worked to a fine art. But I, not that I, like... I wasn't hunted away from it, yeah. but I un- I'm happy to delegate things too. Like I'm not, I'm not a control freak. If somebody's really good at it, turns out she was really good at making a wedding. Thing, making right? a wedding, yeah. But I missed a load of these kind of things. Like so, there's a thing I don't know if you did it or if she if she did it, but you can. So when you invite your guests, yeah, there's a link to a website no. of all the stuff that you would like. I heard, like, I, I, no, we were, no, fuck, no, 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 we didn't. Because, uh, like, no, I, I, an old I, mean, I believe it's quite an American movie. thing. Of course you know? it is, like, But, yeah. like, nobody wants stuff. You just want the fucking money. Throw us a few bob. To, to pay for the fucking yeah, wedding. Do you know, you just wedding. want your money back. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? If you cover That's, your dinner, we'll so be happy please, enough. Please, like. if anybody's going to my wedding, any of you 70 <laughs> lucky bastards, if you're listening to this, all right, just a few bob in a card. We don't want a fucking toaster. I uh-huh. yeah I could never grasp that like we like I tried to put that across now we got a couple of cool things like like one off things that you would like we got a a one off whiskey a bottle of one off whiskey oh which are with was it no no it was by it, a, it was oh, si- it was right. it was signed by the distiller yeah, yeah but it wasn't actually it was one off whiskey from the guy whose family owns uh, a tiny little distillery in Dublin very nice and they, it's twenty four years old this bottle and it, it quite literally they make. 10 of them a year kind of a thing I do awful things with those bottles I of one off whiskeys oh. yeah. like a mate of mine asked me to be his groomsman yeah. and got me like a, a thing printed on it and signed by the thing and I was like oh that's absolutely amazing <laughs> and you know what we'll hang on to the wedding <laughs> and we'll, we'll have a drink <laughs> out of it and we'll have a little toast I'd say a week passed and we were back here after a night out I just I think I just devoured like a, a taco fries out of hillbillies Class. and I was like oh, just have a little like, yeah, have, little there was nothing in the yeah, house yeah. except for the groomsman bottle and every drop of it gone yeah because yeah. it's too nice like it is too fucking nice yeah so the, the wedding's in July it's actually next month and <laughs> I'm <laughs> just kind of half thinking of maybe kind of just refilling it and <laughs> bottle of heady you know, that's so. very bad isn't it it is yeah it is I did but, you drink the one off whiskey I keep on making herself uh, anytime I think I'm, if I discover during the day when I'm sober and it's not appropriate to get fucked up yeah I say things I'll say it to herself go here can you move that somewhere and move it somewhere where I don't know. Because okay. I know, I know my limitations. I'm a fucking wally when I'm steaming. And yeah, I'll go, yeah. I'll just have a little drink, you winky. You won't even know. And it's, it's so be... smooth. At 24 years old, that bottle, will, I know for a fact I'll open it. And I I could neck the fucking thing. Yeah, yeah. So, it, w- it wouldn't sting. No. Yeah. The, Once it goes over yeah. 18 years, it doesn't sting. So yeah. I had keep, I see, I, I understand my limitations. And I, I'm not of any notion that I'm smarter than I actually am. Yeah. So... Things like that, I go, can you keep those things away from me? Or do I need to avoid these situations? Because I'm, I'm in no way going, I think I'll be grand. I found out in the past so You're many times grand. in these, yeah. so many situations. So it's easier for me to avoid scenarios yeah, than so to actually uh, chance so it. How many times has she moved it? <laughs> at least seven times. <laughs> I, I swear to God, at least seven times she's not to fucking move yeah, it. Like. But you can see this house, there's actually nowhere to hide things because it's, it's quite a small little two up, two, two down here. So, I mean... And every it's, I had no chance. Yeah, to be fair, everything is where it should be. Yeah. Like and like our house there's a couple of weird kind of little nooks and crannies, like so she hides it. But I found it in like uh, you just know, by accident or by did accident. you actually go fucking look No, no, it? by accident I lift up a fucking thing and go, Jesus, that was how the fuck did she put it in there? It took me twenty minutes to get in at that yeah, thing. Like amazing. Which, yeah. So you so need So when are you going to drink that? Sorry. I don't I, we don't know. I don't like I because if we put a big day, you know, oh should we drink? I don't know. Or you know, do you hang on to it and hide it away and go, we've worked fucking money in a couple of years? gave me one as well from Middleton. It was lovely oh, Middleton. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the, I think that the, the, the idea was to drink it when my child was born or something like that. But it was years ago. Yeah. 
gone anyway. It was gone within a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I don't know when it's the terrible, isn't it? See, like people have given me suggestions. Oh, you should you should both take a drink out of that on your anniversary every year. And I'm kind of going. I think they should do give you a voucher and say, here is your bottle of whiskey. It's in care. At the it's moment. a great idea to actually. That it's, is a it's great in a, it's idea. It's in a safety deposit box, there's and a, here's the and it doesn't open until there's a place in Brussels that her her son's brother he, he he's doing well for himself, but he loves big knobby fucking. He walks around in very expensive clothes and stuff, and he hangs around with other Europeans and wears stylish glasses. You know these lads. Okay, yeah. But yeah. there's a place where you can actually have your own uh, little safety deposit box, and it's a a wine. It's a wine. Dispensary, so it's the right so temperature and everything. So it's yeah. essentially it's like you know uh, what do they call it? The humidors for fucking whatever for for cigars. Oh, for cigars yeah, yeah. And you would go to this this wine and whiskey club, and basically you have your own little thingy there and everything. But oh. it means you don't get fucked up at home on a class bottle of wine. You just go yeah. there and go. I'll have a little glass or two of that now. And they go and they pour it for you. Yeah. Put it back in the fucking thingy, me Bob, or whatever. Whether it's the whiskey or whatever. But so you. It's a good fuck. It's a great idea. It's a bullshit. It's bullshit, but they're selling class bullshit. Like, yeah, that's another thing, actually, isn't it? Uh, wine and beer tasting on the radio. Have you ever? Did you ever listen to that uh, with Moncrief? Yeah, I can't. I can't wrap my head around it. I'm like, like this is the least crack I've ever had in my life. Like, because just, you're just telling me how class that stuff is, and I'm and driving. I'm driving. Yes. And I'm driving. <laughs> so like, oh, fuck God. off, lads. Yeah, but like, would that work as a podcast? Like, or, or, oh, the beer one. Beer yeah. is a big one. Yeah, yeah, no, it is. There's a couple of lads doing big, big ones, but I mean. But they're just tasting it. They're not fucking getting mouthy. Tasting it. Yeah, I think the, I think a good one. I'd like to do a couple. Like, there's been talks of tr- the, myself, PJ Galler, and the lads from the What's the Story podcast. And I think there's one other podcast talking about where we do a combined swapcast. They call oh, it. Fred, like Flintstones meets the Jetsons kind, kind where of thing. We, yeah, where we all sit and we all get steaming yeah. on a whiskey taste night. Where we actually, it's not tasting it. You're getting fucked up. Yeah. So that that is in the pipeline. So I, it'd be interesting to see. What a really drunk podcast! It might end up being about like five, six hours long, like. But yeah, really, it could be absolutely shite as well. Could be. It's a lot. Like we're very open to the idea that it could be fucking muck. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Here, you've got a fucking a fitness class to go, or some sort yeah, of fucking thing I'm going to do. To, yeah, we're we're trying to get fit for this wedding, but they're it's we're wrapping up when they come back, basically. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, is that? Oh, yeah, they're gone. Yeah, they're oh, gone to do a, a couple of messages. So, yeah. Do you still have the act? Was it over in Newcastle in, in County Selbridge? Dublin? Selbridge is it? Yeah, so, the road so we're two days in Selbridge and then one day in the Nall and one day in Stumullen. So we're kind of all it's Seamus Ennis, is it? Isn't Seamus it? Ennis, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great, great guy. Have you done a gig there? Have you? Yeah, a few times. Yeah, outdoor gig or in the in actual the, in the, the, the theatre. Yeah, how many does it hold? Rammed in maybe eighty. Jeez, that's grand. Rammed in, like yeah. you know. But I would say I think that'd be good room for comedy, would it? It's very good. It's a very good. I, like if you and you, the thing is, it's a very good room, but you got to come at him the right way. Yeah. Um. If how did you find the the the, the null people? The first time, they were very standoffish and frightened. Because we we teach kids in the null. Yeah. And five minutes away in Stamullen. We teach another set of kids, yeah. and the energy between the two different sets of, of kids and parents is completely different. It's like the way of life in the Nall is completely different to five minutes down the down the road in Stamullen. A really, really different but energy. The, the Nall could be in fucking backwoods, fucking you know Tipperary. It's it's yeah. really in the middle of nowhere, even though it is kind of Dublin. It's Dublin, really yeah, agriculture. It's like it's, yeah, but I can like, and if you've a good MC who kind of warms them into the situation, but at the first like. The first time I remember going on there, it's like, well, this isn't, these people are very standoffish and frightened of the scenario. Yeah, yeah. But the last time, I think I took some of the learnings from that and went, oh, right. I know the MC is MC in here, but I better do a bit of my own chat with Between, these people. Like, the and once, once I kind of had a five minutes with them, we were off to the fucking races Brilliant, then. Yeah, I went, yeah. oh, fucking, there's Brendan the smell of diesel off you. Go, where you going? <laughs> you're telling me you're from fucking Dublin. Well, you cold cheap fucker. <laughs> and then it was that, 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 and that. And then yeah. we could have our own little gig then. And yeah. it probably it it was probably rude of me because uh, you know other people had to go on that night like but it was you know yeah. fuck him <laughs> yeah, fuck, <laughs> fuck yeah. him you yeah. know you've been there you don't want to be that soldier twice yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so I found once you kind of give him a bit of a cozy hug yeah with a bit of chit chat you could light him up and quite literally explain it's gonna be some dark shit but don't worry we're all in this together like, you know what I mean like, <laughs> you go quite dark do you? yeah I'm not like yeah but I, I don't I don't shy away from dark yeah it, or I don't go isn't it gas we're being dark right now it, if it ends up a bit fucking dark then yeah grand yeah. but look it's we've there's nobody watching us 
we're all thinking a bit filthy, like, and we're all a bit fucking dark. So don't be worried about. Yeah, that. there is, there's a bit of dark. You know, but it was yeah. gas after that night. I remember coming out, and there's a pub across the road where they, you see, they've only Killings, a wine license yeah. in there, but they've a beer license across the road, and they allow them to bring their glasses over and drink pints. Oh, really so the boys bring two pints in. At the break, then they rush across with their empty glasses, get two more get pints, and bring yeah. them on. So, but afterwards, like there was a mad sing song happening across. I was raging. I was going, I don't actually want to fuck off. This is. Looks like that yeah, bar is and not... Yeah, and it's just, it's not like you can get a bus home, like, do you no, know what I mean? No, but that like, pub yeah. looked like it, like, this place was all fucking Land Cruisers and fucking Hiluxes, like, these boys, that place is not closing all night. Yeah, like, yeah, You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The crack was only You know that off. the guard is in there with them. Oh, yeah, yeah if yeah. there is a guard, yeah, like, you yeah, know, like, yeah. but the, it was, yeah, a nice, nice little spot. And what, what age groups then do you take in? So take in like you're fucking <laughs> like you're Fagan. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, my dear. Just if you're free, you can join the performing arts. Me with dear. my fingerless gloves, you yeah. creepy bastard, yeah. Fagan. Not a big of all do, boy. <laughs> uh, three. Uh, so we have three to six year olds, seven to nine year olds, ten to twelve year olds, and then thirteen plus. Um, so yeah, so all different. So from three up to eighteen, we've got uh, students, um, and it's great. It's a really good time at the moment for uh, state schools because uh, there just seems to be loads of fucking kids around. Loads of kids. Right. It like, it's like we're kind of reaping the rewards of... A, it sounds very commercialised, but we, we are reaping the re- rewards of a, a baby boom from seven yeah. years ago. Do you know what I mean? Because there's right. loads yeah, yeah, of, yeah. you know, six, seven, eight-year-olds. And then the performing arts, like how many of your buddies would have been in fucking stage school when you were a young fella, like? Um, Jesus. Like, for, like prior to going in and you making friends in the stage school, like, you know... Yeah, so it's a couple of my a couple of my buddies are kind of Abbey actors and, oh, are and they? that kind of thing. Yeah, so I like I one mate, Kieran O'Brien, he's flying, he's never not working. Um he, he went, you know, from stage school into I think he did the um the Trinity acting course. Um and he's never stopped working. Uh, and that's part of where where I go, I'd love to have actually gone and studied. because uh, I'm an un- uneducated buffoon. Um, I kind of just went straight into acting, you know, from being a kid. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So kind of raw and instinctive rather than trained and, um, you know. I, I, I just, get you, yeah. yeah. But then there's horses for courses too, like when you can be too fucking... For, but the thing that the turned me off training was that you weren't allowed to work while you were training. Right. So, you know what I mean? So if you want to go to college to be an actor, um, you can get a job in a bar, but you wouldn't be able to take on you know, even a day on a film or a day, you know, making an ad or whatever. Really? You cannot work in the profession. Because they, they, you're not part, ready, is that it? Yeah, well, they, it's part of the thing of they don't want you working with other directors. They want to break you down completely as a performer and rebuild you from the ground up. I suppose, like, if you had fuck all personality to start with, that'd be a cool thing. Yeah. But if you have a bit of personality, but then... What do I know about the fucking Yeah, like, I, it's you know, like, like, they'll tell you that it's not about personality. It's about, yeah. you know, technique and all that kind of stuff, you know, and your approach to the to the script and how you break it down and stuff. But I think more, more and more people are kind of getting into performing arts, whether it be dancing or fucking acting these days. Like, yeah. it was either fucking hiding your room or go play sports when I was a young fella. Like, yeah. It was one or the other. Yeah. There was, there. now I know, but then, like, I know there was none where I was because it was fucking rural but Ireland. I guarantee you there is something. Or there, like, Dale Cronin has about fucking 20 dance schools all over fucking yeah. Tipperary at the minute, like, yeah. and Cork. Like, you know, he's, him and a bunch of other people are yeah, dance just, schools and acting schools. Yeah, it's just, there was it's nothing. It's a thing of, like, we were looking, we, we teach four days a week and we were looking at a possible fifth day. Now, n- 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 there's absolutely no hope of it now because it's just the teaching four days a week is yeah. perfect for us you know uh, we, myself and Rachel teach together um, but we were looking at a possible fifth day um, yeah. and we are just looking and it's like it's all a case of having to find a place that doesn't already have one Do really you know I mean? yeah and th- there's fucking something everywhere now you know by um, Jesus so you kind of just have to stay put and make sure that your one is, is, is the best one um, and you know be ready for the, the next one to try and move in on your patch because that they're just popping up everywhere, so you have to make sure that your your brand and your product is. Uh, that sounded very fucking middleman. Very there, wanky, very yeah, wanky there. Sorry. But I liked it. I liked it. Yeah. I liked it. I, for some reason, I liked it. I don't know where I thought I was. There. I feel like sorry, I need I just to get blacked out. I feel like I need to get you to cut a ribbon on something oh, already. Oh God! <laughs> if there is anyone out there looking for someone, I swear to God, I've actually got my own scissors. <laughs> As you a have, big... If ever a man had a hand for cutting scissors, that is a photographic hand. Do you like that? Yeah, it's yeah. like both sides of it. You have yeah. no bashed bits. All oh, mine have all red blotchy bits and fucking chunks of bits. That's all out. that labour. Look, that, look that, at that, that yeah. shit. No, this, I've, I've you got... can't photograph that hand. I know this is great <laughs> for podcasting right now, but George has fucking gorgeous hands. Thank you very much. Uh, they're available. Um, <laughs> and actually, a fraction of what you would have paid in 2001. <laughs> 
<laughs> because fucking Love Island are going to be over now next month, you know, fresh off their oh, fucking Love sweet. Island shit. Jesus. And they'll be just cutting ribbons in nightclubs left, right and centre for a, a hundred quid or a few free drinks. But if you're looking for someone quality to, a, a to cut your fucking ribbon. High quality fucking proper And if you have a them. decent butcher's <laughs> or a super value somewhere. Oh yeah, he, yeah. like fucking even a Landis. You do a Landis? Uh, yeah, Mace, I'd even... You'd stoop to Mace, would you? Yeah, I would absolutely. Do you know what? Yeah. You're dead right. Anywhere that has a deli. <laughs> Hot chicken rolls. Hot chicken rolls. I will I will sample your rolls. I'll review them. I'll put a link to it up onto my Twitter. Uh, and I'll cut your fucking ribbon for a few bob. I'll do anything for a few bob now because obviously you, <laughs> back in the day, like it was just me, my own mouth to feed. But yeah. now... Like you, you do, you'd be thinking, fuck, I do have to actually get a few bob in now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that thing, of we, we had to go and get a house. We had to go and buy a house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I wanted to have something to leave my child for when I'm gone. It's weird, isn't, <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. How you went from staying in the Four Seasons. Mam, I won't be it home. I won't be home, man. Well. S- Where are you staying tonight, George? Oh, don't worry. I just took out a suite in the Four Seasons. I'm cutting a ribbon tomorrow. Don't worry about it. That was true. I never mentioned the Four Seasons, but that actually... Was it the Four I Seasons? I fucking swear to God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because it was, right, star you it was going. right next door to uh, to RTE. Yeah, yeah. There was one time I got home at six <laughs> o'clock in the morning, um, and my alarm was set for quarter past six. I got fifteen minutes sleep. My mum will tell you this story, yeah, uh, when you see her. Uh, yes, yeah, so fifteen minutes sleep, and then I got collected to go into work. <laughs> fifteen minutes sleep. That was back in the day, though. Well, what were you like? Twenty, twenty-one. I was 19, 19. You could go 30. on 15 minutes of sleep. Like, oh, yeah. Now you would fucking have a you stroke. You wouldn't want to. You don't no, want to no. now. You'd have, a, you'd, you know, you'd have a stroke midday in the day. Like, but yeah. it's... Yeah. <laughs> the force. I can't believe yeah, I did. Yeah, that's actually... That's I just man, threw you it just out there that, just for a crack. Fucking weird. Like, that's what, like... Yeah, because they had big rooms, so you could have big parties in the, what in the rooms. What a yeah. bollocks. But yeah. you, were, you were Drake at the time, essentially, around Dublin. You were, yeah. you were Dublin's Drake. Yeah, and no one knew. <laughs> just, just the six people that were in the room. Yeah. Fucking legend, George. Yeah. Do you know what? Just in case they do pop back, we 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 we've hit an hour. Have we hit an hour? We've, we've Jeez, gone over an hour. Flying by. You it's popped flying. your fucking cherry by. Thank you very much, George. Has been fantastic. Hey, you because you are very funny on Twitter actually as well, slagging people off like Eric Lawler and whatnot. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be one for a hyperbole. <laughs> hyperbole. I thought that when I saw that word, I thought it was hyperbole. I was like. That was what I read first day I ever read it, and then I heard somebody say it to me. I went, "Oh, shut up, Tom!" Okay, just yeah, yeah. hyperbole. Just yeah. start picking big fucking words. Uh, yeah. So at Georgie Mac, there you go, there Georgie you go. Mac. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, dude. Yeah, buddy. And my thanks to George. Wasn't that nice? Just to know that he got a ear roast and probably straight after that. You can follow him, Georgie Mac. Georgie, as in Georgie with an E Y M A C. Follow him on Twitter. He's very very funny keeps you up to date with all the cool shit that's going on he's the sort of fella you could message him and I'd say he'd answer you back he's a he's a cool fun fun fella thank you very much George of course hit subscribe if it's your first time listening give us now a rating as well the good stuff now the five stars don't be worrying about any of those other fucking stars I, I don't give a shit about that no good to anybody give me five stars or give me nothing at all lads uh, share share it on whatever social platform you're using just fucking share it retweet it whatever you have to do get the word out there to everybody of course there is the Patreon page and the Tea Republic if you feel like contributing to the podcast for all other gigs go to tomomahoney.com forward slash gigs defendingthecaveman.ie for tickets directly to that right go on away youngsters and I'll talk to you again on Tuesday Tuesday